Greetings. My name is Mr. Cooper and this presentation is called The Right to Issue Credit Money. Congressman Patman interviews the governor of the Federal Reserve Banking System. On September 30, 1941, Marina Eccles, the governor of the Federal Reserve System, testified before the House Committee on Banking and Currency. Congressman Wright Patman, chairman of the House Committee, asked how the Fed got the money to purchase $2 billion worth of government bonds in 1933. How did the Federal Reserve get the money? We created it. Out of what? Out of the right to issue credit money. And there is nothing behind it, is there? Except our government's credit. That's what our money system is. If there were no debts in our money system, there would be, there wouldn't be any money. That was an actual, what you just heard was an actual uh, conversation with Wright, pa Wright Patman, Congressman Wright Patman. Uh, I should continue. To receive credit, one must have collateral, right? If so, what constitutes the collateral for the United States? Is it not land and labor? And why borrow money that had been created out of thin air at a cost when the government has the sovereign right to create its own currency for free to issue to its people? Since interest does not circulate within the economy, interest manifests in the form of real estate lost to bankers and other properties, right? And, and an exploited laboring class. It is called peonage, people, debt bondage. And the illustration here is seeking to depict this debt bondage situation. The borrower is the, uh, was being depicted, is the public sector, the corporate industrial sector with the entrepreneurs. And they issue commercial paper, which are bonds, corporate bonds, to the banking system promising to pay interest plus principal, principal plus interest, but interest does not exist within the economy. The lender, which is the commercial banks that lend money to corporations and other businesses, they create the money out of thin air and then they loan it to the borrower. The loan of P. P stands for principal. The principal is the face value that is printed on the dollar. If the corporations, more than likely, they do not receive any physical cash, it's just a an accounting entry within the computer, more than likely. And when there's time to spend hard money, uh, the money is made available, I'm sure. Money, the money supply is ex nihilo, which means out of nothing, out of nothing, excuse me. Our money supply had been created out of nothing. And we have to pay interest on the money that we borrow, but there is no interest money in circulation. Only the principal circulates. 
Therefore, we, we are all competing for the same pot of gold that had been created out of thin air, created out of nothing. We are all competing to pay interest. Look at these corporate bosses, if you will, corporate folk. They all are racing to get a hold of the same pot of gold. Everybody cannot win. Default is imminent. Velocity of money will not suffice. This is fool's gold. Why race to pay interest when we the people can create our own money for free and we have wouldn't have to go through this absurdity right all businesses have an interest burden these are the words of thomas jefferson he said and i sincerely believe that banking establishments are more dangerous than standing armies and that the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity under the name of funding is but swindling futurity on a large scale. Now what does that mean, swindling futurity? It's simple. You're cheating the next generations to come. When you borrow money and then you put it off to be paid back at a future date so that your children will bear the debt burden. That is wrong, that is immoral, that is inhumane. And if you don't think that Thomas Jefferson was not on point, look at this. This is the national debt clock. Our national debt as of uh, Christmas Eve around, I think I took the snapshot around uh, 11 or 12 in the morning, uh, in the in the afternoon rather, uh, I forget exactly, but it was this Christmas Eve, 2023. The national debt is 33.9 trillion dollars, roughly 34 trillion dollars. Each working person is responsible for the debt uh, of $260,000 roughly. That is your responsibility, believe it or not. You are liable for $260,000 if you are working. If you are not working, then uh, the, the total beside it is $100,000. $100,967 is your debt burden. Believe me, you will be paying some of this. It is impossible impossible to pay all of it. Uh, at some point, this tsunami of debt will catch up with us and we will find ourselves uh, in dire straits. Here's more proof. Look at the price of gasoline. This is where this is spilling out to. Uh, this is your inflation. There's no way out of this. There is no way out. The Fed, if the Fed lower interest rates, then this gets worse. If the Fed, if the Fed raise interest rates, then the money supply contracts and it even gets worse. We're in the catch 22. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. Look at the price of bread. Two for eight dollars. Two loaves of bread for eight dollars. Remember when a loaf of bread was about twenty-five cent, or fifty cent, or even a dollar. And this is the good bread, the, the cheap, thrifty bread that you want to eat. It's terrible. And even the thrifty bread, I believe, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't, I don't eat much bread. But uh, this is how bad the economy has gotten. We're not at Venezuela, Zimbabwe levels yet, though. Even the fast foods are ridiculously high, right? Uh, this Subway meatball sandwich is close to $8. 
when at one time you can take less than $10 to buy a whole lunch. Now you can barely get lunch. My lunches are averaging me $20 to $30 a day, believe it or not. I have to start cooking at home, but I just don't have the time. So uh, this is my presentation. I hope you had been enlightened by it. I have more things to convey. This is a long build. I'm just taking uh, short jabs at this uh, economic uh, system here. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. I bid you adieu. I bid you adieu.